Hello, welcome to the Apple Orchard. What type of apples do you want to pick today? Thank you so much. What type of apples do you have available to pick today? Well, let's see. We have Honey Crisp, Ever Crisp, Cosmic Crisp, Granny Smith, uh -huh. Gala, Fuji, Rome, Pink Lady, Braver, Rome, Jonah Gold, Sunrise Magic, Sweet Tango, Sweetie, Roslyn, Rome, Pinata, Pacific Rose, Opal, Lady Alice, Coral, It being fall, I think one of the quintessential marks of fall is apple season! You know, visiting apple orchards, drinking apple cider, eating apple cider donuts. You know, friendly enough, I don't even know if I increase the amount of apples I eat during the fall, but I do increase the amount of apple flavored things I eat during the fall. And it seems like every single year that apples exist, there are more and more of them. Like at this point, I'm like, are they just freaking making up apple species? You know, like who has ever heard of a cosmic crisp or an ever crisp? Like what happened to just plain old honey crisp? What happened to plain old Fuji? And definitely nobody actually thinks red delicious apples are delicious, they just look pretty. And the answer is yes, they are to a certain extent just making up apples at this point. There are actually 7,500 spe different species of apples. Most of them all came thanks to scientists or thanks to farmers who worked hard to breed an apple that would actually taste good. Because apples are not grown from apple seeds. Well, they kind of are. But if you were to take the seed of a Honeycrisp apple and plant it, you're not gonna end up with a delicious Honeycrisp apple when that seed turns into a tree. And this is due to apple genetics. Because just like humans, where you have a mom and a dad come together and their DNA and genetic material mix and produce a child that could look like their parent, or could very much not look like their parent, so too do apple seeds. Apple trees get cross-pollinated, which means that one tree here is going to receive pollen from another tree, therefore introducing two different sets of genetic material, which could result in an apple that has absolutely nothing to do with its parents. Crazy. So to solve this and to create delicious tasting apples and wilder and wilder more varieties of apples, farmers, agriculturists, scientists use something called grafting. So grafting is actually really kind of cool when you think about it, like plants, sorry, plants are wild. <laughs> grafting is when you can take a pre-existing tree, so let's say you really like the roots of a tree, it's got good roots, it's growing good, but you don't like the fruit that tree is producing. So you can actually take a piece of a different tree and graft it onto that original tree and keep its good roots, its good growing structure. But whatever you graft it onto it, that's the type of fruit that tree's gonna bear. So if you have a Honeycrisp apple tree and you really like the apples it's producing, you take a piece of that tree off, graft it to another tree, and boom, another tree that's producing identical Honeycrisp apples to that first tree or the second tree. Kind of lost which trees I was talking about there. But in doing so, you create identical apples generation after generation. You don't have to rely on a mixed bag of genetics, but also it leaves a lot of really fun room for new apple varieties to come about as you select for beautiful colors, a thin skin, a crisp apple flesh, a sweet or a tart taste by grafting and choosing different traits you want to create new species of apples. So if you're wondering, are they just making this up at this point? Yes, yes they are. But we as the consumer get to benefit from this crazy combination of farming, agriculture, science, and genetics to create the delicious apple we all love to eat. <laughs> Any apple. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed learning just a little bit more about, I don't actually even know if this is America's favorite fruit. One of America's favorite fruits? A very common fruit we see every day and probably eat a lot. Who knows? We learned a little bit more about them, where they come from, and know you're not going crazy when you come across a new apple species you've never heard of. That's just the scientists at work making new apple species for us to enjoy. Thanks for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check me out on Instagram, and keep it sciencey. Like, who has ever heard of. But we, the consumer, get to benefit from all of that crazy wild apple farming genetic science and people coming up with new apples because that's the map. <laughs> I think it was the honeycorn. I'm not really sure.
Ai, foi do fim, foi legal. Oh, my God.